One assumption we made when we moved from the MOS capacitor to the MOSFET is that the relationship between the gate to body in the MOS capacitor is replaced by the relationship between the gate and the source. So if we look at the MOSFET, there's something a little bit uh, odd happening between the gate, the body and the source. Uh, these three terminals are all coupling into the channel. The gate is going to couple through the channel uh, to the channel through C oxide, which is the oxide capacitance. Applying more gate voltage allows the gate to bring more electrons into the channel. The body is also going to uh, uh, couple into the channel through a capacitance formed through the depletion region called C depletion. This is a normal coupling that we also saw in the MOS capacitor. What's really weird though is that the source is also coupling to the uh, channel through CSB, which is uh, the source to body capacitance, and C depletion, which is the body to channel capacitance. Now, this capacitance CSB occurs because there is a depletion region between the body and the source, and this depletion region forms a capacitance between the two terminals. In other words, the source has a resistive connection to the channel because they are both n-type, but it also has a capacitive connection to the channel through the depletion region. Now, what does this capacitive connection between the source and the channel do? It allows the source to affect the charge in the channel. So, if the source potential is high, this allows the source to attract some electrons from the channel. So, this allows the source to take away charges from the channel. So, raising Vs is going to allow us to take away electrons from the channel. What is the impact of this? The impact appears on V threshold, the threshold voltage. So, the threshold voltage is the potential at which is the VGS level at which the electron concentration in the channel is equal to the whole concentration in the bulk. Because raising Vs Vs at ground is different from Vs somewhere else. Because raising Vs takes away some electrons from the channel, then raising Vs relative to the body is going to also raise V threshold. And so V threshold becomes a function of the body to source potential with more source potential relative to the body taking away electrons from the channel and thus increasing the value of, uh, of the threshold voltage. This is called the body effect. And the body effect is actually best seen by drawing the uh, uh, band diagram between the source and the body. And so, if this is the source and we are still uh, in depletion or accumulation mode, then there is a reverse bias PN junction between the source and the body. And so, when we look at the band diagram of this uh, of this p-n junction and let's assume for a moment that we have ground at the body and ground at the source then this is a uh, an equilibrium band diagram for a p-n junction and so this is the top diagram here here we have the fermi level at the source and we're here we have the fermi level at the body and they are the same fermi level because we are at thermal equilibrium this is the point at which we have an interface between the source and the body this distance indicates the doping level in the source, and this distance indicates the doping level in the body. Now, if we look at the top band diagram and we try to obtain a, uh, an expression for Vs uh, at the threshold voltage, surface potential at the threshold voltage, which is equal to 2 phi B, so it is equal to 2 times the uh, bulk potential. Uh, the bulk potential is equal to Ei, minus E Fermi in the substrate, or E Fermi in the body, divided by uh, Q. Now, E Fermi in the body in the top diagram is equal to E Fermi in uh, the source, because we are in an equilibrium band diagram, and so the two are the same, and Vs is equal to 2 phi B. Now, when we raise the source potential, we actually, um, we actually uh, make this PN junction in reverse bias. It's not at thermal equilibrium. And so the energy levels on the source side, on the end side, are pushed down, 
and we create a, uh, a state of thermal non-equilibrium at least around the interface. So around the interface we see a state of non-thermal equilibrium where we have uh, no single Fermi level because this is the situation when we have non-equilibrium. Instead we have two quasi-Fermi levels. One is a Fermi level for holes and this is the Fermi level of the body and one is a Fermi level for electrons and this is the Fermi level of the source. So when we want to calculate uh, the surface potential, the surface potential at, thermal, uh, at the threshold conditions is equal to EI minus E Fermi for electrons. But E Fermi for electrons is not the E Fermi of the body, it's actually E Fermi for the source. So it is equal to EF source over Q. Now, we used a, an, a value for V as threshold equal to 2 phi B, but if we look at this, it is not 2 phi B, because phi B is actually EI minus EF for the substrate. And so to re-inject that again here, we subtract EF body and add EF body. This way, we can obtain an expression that includes 2 phi B again. And so this difference is going to be 2 phi B. And we are going to end up with a balance term, which is E F N um, for the, uh, which is E F for the body minus E F for the source divided by Q. Now, E F for the body minus E F for the source is equal to V S B. And so we are going to have 2 phi B plus V S B because the difference in Fermi level between the body and the source is equal to Q VSB. This is the reverse potential that we have applied uh, across this PN junction. And so VS at the, th at the threshold condition is not going to be 2 phi B, it's going to be 2 phi B plus VSB. If we go back to the expression of threshold voltage, it was equal to 2 phi B plus square root of 4 Q Na epsilon silicon phi B over C oxide minus V flat band. Now, we are going to have to replace every occurrence of 2 phi B by 2 phi B plus VSB. Um, it's easy to see that the first term here, which is corresponding to Vs at the threshold condition, is going to be 2 phi B plus VSB. But don't forget that even in the V oxide term, we have a phi B that has to be replaced. So we're going to have 2 QNA epsilon silicon into 2 phi B plus VSB over C oxide. Because recall that V oxide, this expression of V oxide was actually obtained from the relationship between uh, V oxide and V surface. And this is minus VFB. Notice also that V flat band has to be increased by the amount of VSB because the amount of external voltage that we have to apply to flatten the bands of the MOS capacitor is increased by this amount. And so if we simplify a little bit, V threshold is going to be equal to 2 phi B uh, minus V flat band, um, so 2 phi B minus V flat band plus the square root term which is corresponding to, uh, uh, to V oxide. Now, it's always um, useful to try to express something in terms of uh, another thing that we have some reference to, meaning that this threshold voltage could perhaps be related to the threshold voltage expression that we had before, the original threshold voltage expression, this threshold voltage expression. And we're going to call this threshold voltage expression V threshold naught. Because this is the threshold voltage expression when VSB is equal to zero, when the source is grounded. So we'll call it V threshold naught. And to express V threshold in terms of V threshold naught, um, we already have these two terms which exist in V threshold naught, but um, the square term, the square root term, is different in the two. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the square root term from V threshold naught and subtract it again. And thus, we will end up with V threshold naught plus square root 2 QNA epsilon silicon into 2 phi B plus, two v VS plus VSB over C oxide minus square root 
2 QNA, Epsom silicon into 2 Phi B by C oxide. Now we can take a lot in common between these two square root terms, and thus we end up with V threshold naught plus square root 2 QNA, Epsilon silicon by C oxide into square root 2 Phi B plus VSB minus square root 2 Phi B. This term is called the body effect coefficient and is given the symbol gamma, and it has a unit of square root voltage, and this bracket has a unit of square root voltage. If Vsb is equal to zero, then V threshold is going to be equal to V threshold naught.